Hey, so you want to know if Crave TV is worth the money. Crave is Bell's streaming service here in Canada, and it starts out about $10 a month. You have different tiers available to you. So tier one, that $10 a month, you'll get access to on-demand Showtime shows, Crave Originals, some old series that used to be on premium cable networks like HBO. So for example, Game of Thrones, it's not a current show anymore. So you can stream those episodes. And for $10 a month, if you're looking for something to binge during COVID, that sounds like a pretty good deal. Because to buy that, if you remember buying box sets of DVDs of different seasons of shows, you were spending a lot of money. $10 is a pretty good deal for that. But after that, do you want to continue with Crave? You also will get documentaries. You don't get too many like full length um, movies, like Hollywood style movies. That comes in at tier number two, which is $20 a month. That's called Movies Plus HBO. You get everything that I just talked about in tier one, plus you get movies and HBO. The best thing I think about this package is it includes six live channels. And these are the same channels that you would get if you paid for a cable provider. Two of those channels are HBO. The other four are Crave channels. And these are things that are offered through most cable providers right now. Um, they used to be called TMN, which is Total Movie Network. That's been rebranded as these live Crave channels. And you'll get a lot of pretty good movies. Um, these aren't on demand though, so you're not picking what's playing when, but most of the titles that you'll see on those channels are also available for on-demand playback on, on the app. And then there's one higher tier and it's called Movies plus HBO plus Stars. I don't know if this one's really worth it. Stars is a company that's owned by Lionsgate. They have their network in the United States as well. It's a little less popular than HBO, but they do have a lot more movies. As you're browsing through Crave, if you don't have the tier that you need something from or something that you want to watch you'll see it there but it'll have a lock on the corner it'll kind of be faded a little bit black if you see something that you're like hey i like this kind of content but i i'm not part of the the tier for it then maybe it's something you want to upgrade to i've tried all three tiers and i've been able to do that because i'm, I'm not paying full price by the way because there have been deals by my internet provider is virgin they were giving six months at a free or either a really reduced rate it was like three dollars a month or something and so i tried that out i got one from my cell phone provider and back in the day crave used to give 30 days or three months free of crave for signing up now you'll only get seven days free so they've really cut back on that seven days not enough time to binge watch an entire series so if you're already paying for a cable tv subscription crave isn't worth it for you a lot of those cable subscriptions include the same content that's on crave but in their own on-demand format if you're with bell a lot of times your package will already include crave so this is not for you if you already are paying a huge amount for your cable provider in my opinion i'll tell you right now i don't think that crave is worth it i think it's not in the customer's best interest if you think of when netflix came out it was trying to give more power to the customer to be a cord cutter and not to be tied to these cable companies that overcharge people 200 dollars, 250 dollars a month to get all this on-demand content so Netflix came and they were revolutionary with letting us choose what we wanted to watch for a low price per month, but it was still a subscription. Now it's splintered. So in the United States, you've got this Peacock one by NBC, you've got Hulu, you've got Amazon Prime Video, you've got Apple TV Plus, all this stuff. And now if you wanted to pay for all these things, you're paying just as much as you would if you got a premium cable subscription. In Canada, we're a little bit more limited, but we're heading in the wrong direction, just like the United States, where you will have to pay for Netflix, Crave, we don't have Hulu, but Amazon Prime. And if you add all that up, it's just not worth it. The lowest package at Crave, I feel wasn't worth the price. There's not a lot of options for you and $10 a month, you're not getting as much as you would if you put that money towards Netflix. The medium package for $20 a month has the best content, especially back when Game of Thrones was live. That was a show that I wanted to see as soon as it came out, stream it right on the HBO channel that is available on the Crave app. That was fun to do. That seemed like it was worth the money, but I didn't maintain that subscription the whole year because $20 a month 
when I'm not going to be even watching very many shows on there, not worth it. Recently, Canada's Drag Race is a new show that has premiered on Crave as a Crave original. So I can get that in the first tier package for $10 a month. I don't think I get it right when it comes out because they're probably streaming it on one of their Crave channels. I can watch it on demand right after it airs. Back to what I was saying about the cost. If you add up all the cost of streaming services that um, you could possibly use in Canada, it would add up to $45. So if I did Netflix, which I pay $15 a month, plus $10 a month for Spotify, that brings us to 25. And then you wanna add another 20 on for the medium level of Crave. Uh, that brings us to $45 a month. I also pay for Amazon Prime, not because of Amazon Prime Video, just because of the shipping but Amazon Prime Video doesn't really give you much content, but they do offer additional channels or packages that you can get, and they start around $10 a month. So you're just adding on to that $45. I can't be bothered to pay that much. My parents pay way too much for their premium cable subscription, and I think that there is gotta be some middle ground that makes everyone happy in between paying a high price for cable or paying for a bunch of different streaming subscriptions. So some people do different things like watch IPTV, which is not really a legal way of watching TV, plus it's not really reliable and sometimes the quality of these channels is really low. Um, I know somebody who uses it and frequently like half of the channels that they want to watch are unavailable. The cost for an IPTV subscription is super cheap. I think it's about like $20 for like a year or six months, something like that. My best advice would be get yourself an antenna, become a cable cutter. And if you get an antenna, even a cheap one that just sticks on your wall, I live in a condo. I used to use one of these all the time. I'll include a link in the description on Amazon for where you can find one of these, but really, uh, maximum you'd be paying is like 40 or $50. And then once you have it, you're never paying again. And you get 20 to 30 channels. If you're in a city like Toronto or Montreal, for sure. Um, you just got to point it at where you know the TV towers are coming from. So I would point it in Toronto toward the CN Tower and toward Lake Ontario, if that's possible, because I'm going to be able to pick up channels from the United States like ABC, Fox, NBC, CBS. It will reach across the lake, surprising. You'll also get Canadian channels like CBC, CTV, Global, uh, City TV. You'll get some local ones like TVO. There's just a bunch of channels that you'll get. You'll get PBS from the US. There's a lot of options if you wanna just flip channels. A lot of people miss flipping channels. It's not all about just choosing and streaming. Then you can pair your antenna, which once you pay that $50 up front, it's not gonna cost you anything monthly. Pair that antenna with a streaming service like Netflix. And if there's a show that you really wanna watch live so you can live tweet it or so that you won't go on your phone and see any spoilers before you get a chance to actually watch the show, pay for Crave, but only pay for it for the duration of the series that you wanna watch. And then after that, cancel it. So conclusion, is Crave worth it? No. Bell is a huge content producer. They own so many channels and they also own so many ways to distribute that. So they offer cable, they offer satellite TV. They also have their cell phone network. They're making a lot of money. I don't like monopolies on things. It's not fair. There needs to be a healthy competition. There used to be one either by Rogers or Shaw called Show Me, but it went out of business because I guess with our population here in Canada, it's hard to sustain something like that. We don't have a lot of our own content. A lot of it comes from the United States, um, but the stuff we do have is pretty good. I mean, Handmaid's Tale comes from Canada, Canadian writer. It's filmed and produced here. Anyways, that's off topic. Is Crave worth it? No, use it and then lose it. Subscribe only for the time that you want to watch a series and then cut it. You can always sign up again later. Look for promotions. Look for promotions with your internet provider. Look for promotions with your uh, cell phone provider. And just do some research on the, on the web because you're going to find coupon codes for sure. Don't pay full price for anything. <laughs> All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe and leave me a comment on what you think about Crave. Is it worth it for you? Have you tried it? Are you gonna try it? And what show motivated you to pay for the subscription or just to test it out? And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.